Okay, so the recording has started, yay, and I'm going to switch to uh, quiet or lecture mode or whatever they call. So that now theoretically I'm the only one you can hear. Uh, I am looking at the chat line, so uh, on, the, on the screen, if you don't see the chat section, there's a little chat icon at the bottom of your screen or somewhere in your window. You can click on that and see what's happening in chat, right? Let's see, right now I'll just put hi on there, and you should be able to see that in your chat window. That's where you can ask questions, make comments while we're going along here. Okay, so here we go. Um, much uh, in the same vein as we did three weeks ago with the Amtrak train route from San Luis Obispo south to San Santa Barbara, we're going to do another segment of that. So we have the same sort of guide to uh, follow uh, that's available to you at the address that's on the screen. You can get a copy of the uh, guide that you're looking at. And it runs from Paso Robles, uh, mark, marker A, all the way down to the next page. Let's see if I can get the next page up there. Yeah, there we go. That's the back side of that same guy um, all the way through to you, which is uh, at San Luis Obispo. Uh, it's kind of a handy thing if you're uh, following on along there. Okay, here's a uh, shot of, as soon as I get it up here, the Coast Starlight coming into Paso Robles from the north. I forget what street that guy happens to be crossing at the moment, um, but it's not very far north of the Amtrak uh, station, which is right here. This is the Paso Robles Amtrak station, relatively new, very new actually, if you consider the history of railroads in the area. This station was built in 1998. Uh, by the city, I think. that It's a transportation hub uh, for them. Uh, taxis, buses, um, various kinds of transportation exchange happens on the other side of the station that you can't uh, see here. Uh, this is, of course, the track side view of the station where the Coast Starlight goes by and actually any of the Union Pacific trains that go by as, as well go through Paso Robles. Just south of the station is uh, the old depot building, uh, Southern Pacific Depot building in Paso Robles. Um, and it has been restored, was restored some time ago. I don't know exactly when, but there's been shops uh, in the building for at least as long as I was around doing stuff up in Paso Robles. And uh, two of the shops in there happen to be Wineries, interestingly enough, you can see that wine barrel uh, sitting at the station there. The, this, we're at the south end of this depot building, and uh, that's where Dan Vino Winery is. Um, and at the other end of the station, well, here's a picture of inside Dan Vino, just to give you a flavor. It's very music-oriented winery, by the way. Uh, the guys who are doing it were uh, music producer types in the LA area for the longest time, and now they're re kind of retired up here and are doing their thing. And um, uh, that's, if you go up there, there's all kind of musical instruments. There's platinum records on the wall. Um, they have food and so on. It's kind of a neat place to visit. At the other end of the depot building is a winery called Cypher. Um, as in codes, you know, cipher winery. And this is their patio on the back side that uh, is track side. So if you happen to be at the right there at the right time of day, you can watch uh, either the north or southbound coast starlight go through um, or any uh, Union Pacific trains that might happen to be going through as well. So that's kind of a fun one. 
location. And then we were talking earlier about, um, before we got going on this presentation, that, that the museum had done a number of really fun wine excursions where you take the Amtrak train up from San Luis Obispo to Paso Robles, um, then by shuttle go out to a winery or a brewery or something, enjoy the evening, and then get shuttled back to um, San Luis Obispo. It makes a great little trip. And I think Diane was mentioning that we haven't managed to reschedule those yet. Some of the places that we had been doing it aren't doing doing it at all anymore or, or doing the right events at the time that we need them uh, kind of thing. So, so I imagine those will pop back up on the museum schedule if, if we ever work out a, an arrangement with somebody to do that. But those, those were pretty fun. Oh, and also, uh, like last week, I'll try to remember to at least mention this now this one time. All of the links that I'm showing or talking about places of interest that I could gather up uh, this being one of them, Cypher Winery, um, are, will be on the Parlor Car Chats web page, the museum's web page for these, this activity. Um, all there in one place. You just go there and find today's presentation, and all the links will be there. Okay, let's see what's next. Okay, as we move our way down um, south from Pat Paso Robles, uh, one of the sites that you see is this Southern Pacific caboose sitting in someone's backyard. Um, it, that's, that's kind of fun. This is somewhere south of Paso Robles, I'm not exactly sure, uh, before you get headed down the grade. Um, let's see. It'll come up in one of these pictures here, what I was just thinking of. One of the areas you go by is Templeton. This is a picture of the station that isn't in Templeton anymore. Um, uh, Templeton is an, another wine-rich and somewhat restaurant-rich area. It's not a big town, but there's some great restaurants there, access to all kinds of interesting wineries on the east side of town, east side of the highway, up in the Paso area. Of course, everybody, probably everybody on the phone here is um, familiar with the Paso Robles winery area. I don't know how many hundred wineries are up there uh, getting to be known quite well. So always a good excuse to go up to the North County for that. Um, and here's a typical view uh, from the train. Uh, this is somewhere south of Paso Robles before you get to the grade. Um, I'm not exactly sure where, but that's kind of typical countryside uh, that you're going through up there in the in the river valley, mountains in the distance. That's not the river, the water you're seeing there's not, it's just someone's pond. Um, but there are places along this where you can see the river, which generally is a dry riverbed. Uh, these two shots were taken in Santa Margarita. There is uh, a park on the, this must be the east side of the tracks, which, and the tracks are on the east side of town, um, so we're kind of a little ways from the main drag of Templeton. But anyway, this park you, know, you can go and enjoy, and uh, if you get lucky, uh, a train or two might go by while you're there. I caught these two the same day. Uh, we were up there for some um, event. I don't even remember what they were, were doing. Um, but there they came. Always have your camera ready. Also up in the, this area, Santa Margarita, there's the Santa Margarita Ranch. And on the Santa Margarita Ranch is the Pacific Coast Railroad, not railway, okay, railroad. Um, and it's these very interesting uh, train sets and locomotives that they themselves have history. For instance, those coaches are from Disneyland. They're um, five-agent scale original Disneyland coaches that opened the park, I think opened the park in the 50s, and, um, and they're now running behind a couple of locomotives up at the Santa Margarita Ranch. Uh, it's a, the ranch is set up as a venue for events, basically, uh, weddings, conferences, meetings, and occasionally 
uh, large enough events that are open to the public uh, where they may may run the trains and 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 enjoying a train ride as part of the event. So keep your eye on that if if this is something that intrigues you. It's a pretty cool little railroad. This was a fun find. Um, I'm going to see if I can make this run. Uh, it's a drone's view of uh, Amtrak trains uh, or Amtrak train, one coast starlight going through the tunnels that we're about to talk about um, going down the, the grade from Pass Road. So let's see if this will work. Writing's not that easy, but Grammarly can help. This sentence is grammatically correct, but it's Okay, here we go. I think everybody can see that. Is that a cool shot or what? I really like this. And it's about three minutes long, and I think I think it covers all the tunnels. I'm just I'm trying to scoot along here so we don't take up too awful much time just watching a video. Um, there are there's tunnels six through. 10 or 11 up here now. So there's quite a number of them, uh, at least one of which is about three quarters, two thirds, three quarters of a mile long. And here's the northbound starlight working its way up the grade. This is just really fun. I don't know how many times I've watched this video. And here we're popping out right about now, huh? Okay, good enough. Let's see if I can get back to what I was doing. Uh, uh. All right, now. All right, we're back. All right, so here's a shot from um, actually from a private car that was on the back side, back end of uh, one of the coast starlights on an excursion I happen to be on. But the train is uh, part way in, part way out, one of the tunnels. Unfortunately, I I couldn't figure out which tunnel was which in these photographs. So um, you'll just have to uh, imagine. <laughs> going through tunnels and not worrying about too too much which one is which. If you look back on that uh, uh, program that we started with, the, the guide, um, there's a little bit of discussion about each of the tunnels, um, some of which have collapsed over the years, uh, at least one of which has been abandoned um, over the years. Uh, so various things have, have happened with those. There's a good uh, reading on the museum's website about the development of the, the, the putting into the railroad on the Cuesta grade um, and the link of course to that will be uh, there with the presentation. So I encourage you to go if you're really curious about the, the development of that section of railroad from Paso to San Luis it's, it, it is kind of interesting there's a lot of history there. It's, uh, there's another shot of the starlight heading into one of the tunnels. This is uh, 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 an older shot, obviously, of one of the abandoned tunnels, or has since been abandoned. Um, there's about 16 miles of track from San Luis to Santa Margarita. Santa Margarita is sort of is just over the the summit of the of the railroad grade, um, which is one of the first tunnels that you uh, go through. Uh, it's a pretty uh, torturous route. 2.2% um, grade going up the Cuesta grade, I think, is what they refer to as the ruling grade. 
30 miles an hour is the speed limit for passenger trains, 25 for freight. So in my mind, that just extends the time you're on the train going up the grade. So I, I love it. Um, it. They could go slower for, for all I care. Okay, let's move along here. Well, here's an old picture of a, a train wreck that occurred just outside of one of the tunnels in 1969. Um, I think it was just the five helpers that were together. I'm not sure there was a train behind them or not. Um, but coming out of the tunnel, this is Tunnel 7, um, it, it, it uh, derailed and took most of the rest of the four units with it. Okay, next one. And here's a view of uh, Highway 101 from the a rail car on the grade. It, it's quite a view. And it was fun when, particularly when they were constructing some of those cuts and fills and roadway supports. Um, that, that was quite a project. You could see the truck, how they got the trucks and equipment and such downhill from the road and worked up the bed and so forth. The road bed, that is. I'm not sure what this is. Uh, some sort of settling pond or um, production facility of some sort, but it's on the way up the grade um, as you're uh, heading for the tunnels. This is we, We've already come through the tunnels now, and we're about to go into where some sidings are and Horseshoe Curve and Cal Poly and so on. So that, that's we're about in the middle of the trip you might say, at this point. Another shot of the starlight making its way around some of these curves. You can, it, you can tell this must be a pretty serious curve. Um, I'm not that far back in the train, and, and look how close I am. Of course, there's a little, little bit of telephone lens going on, but it's, it's surprising how much of the train you get to see because of all the curves on this trip. Another view from a rail car over there to the uh, mountains on the other side of the grade, and you can see just a little bit of Highway 101, that white rectangle, little tiny white rectangle is a truck. Okay, now we're getting into um, the area where Serrano's siding is. There's a light tower there, a block signal. And here are the next, some uh, little closer view of that. Let's see. Serrano, by the way, is just a, a guy's name. Uh, the, uh, the Southern Pacific bought the rights, uh, the ground rights to put their right of way through here from a guy named Miguel Serrano, and that's why this is called Serrano's Siding. There's a good view of the tracks and the highway as they parallel each other going up the grade. The old Highway 101, by the, or the old highway, it wasn't called 101 at the time, I don't think. Um, well, maybe it was. I'm not sure. Anyway, is is closer to the railroad than it is to the new highway. And you can see bits and pieces of it. Um, Generally, I, as I recall, below the railroad tracks, if you're looking up at the hill where the tracks are from the from 101, then you'll um, you can see some of those remnants. Now we're getting close to the bottom of the grade. Um, from this point in the trip, you can look down from the train and see Stenner Creek Trestle, um, which is a probably the uh, as at least as well known as the tunnels are on this grade as this trestle. Um, it was constructed in 1894. It had to be put in to get the train into San Luis Obispo. Um, again, there's some good reading out there to be done, and I'll have a couple of links on the, on the web page that go into excruciating detail in some cases about, about the uh, trestle. But it, but it makes for a great view from up above. And here in a minute, we'll see uh, some closer looks. Uh, there's closer, a little more telephoto from above.
Another shot from above. You can see some of the vineyards, or not vineyards, I'm sorry, orchards uh, in the area just north of Cal Poly and just south of the trestle. Some water treatment facilities for the city. And now we're going around um, Horseshoe Curve, which is just south of Serrano in the Choro area and just northward, not uh, north on the tracks, not necessarily north of the Stanner Creek Trestle. The, this curve is actually a little bit west of the trestle in real directions. But uh, like this train that was pictured here, it's going north, even though at the moment it looks like it's actually going a little bit east. Now, it's another, the horseshoe curve, of course, is probably the most dramatic of the curves on, on this trip, but, but there's a lot of them, maybe not quite as dramatic, but there's a lot of curves like this. Um, south of the uh, Stender Creek Trestle, and before you get into Cal Poly proper and, and then San Luis Obispo, uh, there's a number of interesting things like this, a California men's colony. Uh, prison, penitentiary, um, as seen from the train on the right, um, and as seen from the train further up above on the left. And here's a picture of the Stenner Creek Trestle itself as seen from a rail car as we approach the bridge. Well, obviously, the front part of the train is already on the, on the bridge. Well, before we leave that, I should mention, and there will be a link to it, too, there's an, there's an interesting hiking trail and sort of park of sorts uh, surrounding Stenner Creek Trestle. I think it's called Stenner Creek Trails or something like that. Anyway, uh, Fun place to visit if you're into hiking, and while you're there, you can enjoy the railroad bridge. Okay, moving on. Now we're getting into the Cal Poly area um, as we approach San Luis Obispo. Uh, of course, most of you know Cal Poly is a big ag school. Um, there's all kinds of activities, agricultural, um, horses, cattle, dairy, um, all over the campus. But we just happen to be passing... Uh, facilities looks like for horses. I think all those buildings you see in the distance there above the train and to the right are part of the Cal Poly campus as well. More ag facilities. Now we're crossing over, um, let's see, I think it's Monterey Street. Uh, there's a bridge over Monterey Street uh, just north of the station a little bit. Um, so we cross this bridge as we're coming into the station from north. And here we are at the San Luis Obispo train station. You can see a little bit of the pedestrian bridge and the access to it behind and to the right. Since I didn't have a fantastic picture of the San Luis Obispo Amtrak station, um, I thought I'd use this one and, uh, from the model railroad that's in the San Luis Obispo Railroad Museum, and then also give me a chance to plug the museum, particularly its model railroad layout. Um, it's, it's got a significant HO scale model railroad going on in there. Uh, 1,200 square feet. It's in a couple of levels. Um, it depicts areas all the way from Paso uh, at the north end to so, so, we're not, I wasn't exactly sure where south, but there's at least bits and pieces of Santa Maria Valley Railroad. Uh, certainly the Guadalupe Exchange is on the railroad. Surf is on the railroad. So at least that far south and maybe a little bit more. Um, it's, it's quite the the layout. Um, if you haven't seen that yet, you owe yourself a trip to the museum, of course, when it reopens, um, to, to see that. 
And if you want to see about it on the rail on the uh, website, there's the address, and it'll, it'll be on the page again. Um, one of the trips I took uh, that got us through this area was the was on the Zephyr, um, uh, was on the Silver Lariat, which was of course part of the California Zephyr train. Uh, and here it sits underneath that pedestrian bridge I mentioned earlier. It's just south of the Am San Luis Amtrak platform, Amtrak Station's platform. Oh, I meant to, um, that bridge reminded me, I meant to scrounge up a picture of the circus train. Uh, when it came through, we were up there on that bridge um, enjoying that. The whole family was. That was kind of an occasion. I think there was a picture of that in the uh, other presentation three weeks ago. Okay, uh, another thing to note about the San Luis station location for the Coast Starlight, it's a crew change location. So uh, both north and southbound trains uh, do a crew change while they're in San Luis Obispo. There's another shot, actually a better shot of the pedestrian bridge that goes across the tracks and uh, a good chunk of the starlight as it approaches the station. The station is just off to the right of the picture. There's the starlight pulling into the station uh, and a Union Pacific set of helpers there on the far track. Helpers are, are required occasionally for going up and over the grade and back down again. Um, and the, those helpers are usually positioned here in San Luis Obispo. And here's the uh, the museum itself. Probably that picture was probably taken a couple of years ago. Not too long ago, though. Um, it is just south of the pedestrian bridge, which is just south of the amp station. Very easy, quick, five-minute walk uh, to get down here. And uh, when there's not pandemics going on, they're open on Saturdays, 10 to 4. And, uh, and occasionally other special events and such at other times. So if you haven't, again, that, that's where the, and it's in that building where, where that model railroad is that I was talking about earlier. And here's just a little bitty piece of that model railroad. I think this is, well, I better not say, I don't remember exactly what area this is. <laughs> okay, that'll do it um, for today. I guess we ended up with a kind of a short one. Um, but, hey, it fits our 30 to 60 minute window, so... Uh, that's fine. Uh, let's see. I was going to mention, um, again, the Parlor Car Chats webpage address is in the upper right-hand corner there. Um, I would really appreciate it if you would head to that feedback link, which is also on the page. It's easy to find. And give us just a little bit of feedback and your your interest and preference in regarding these Parlor Car Chat things that we've been doing online. It'll help us program it, schedule it, et cetera. And speaking of programming and scheduling, um, next week, same time, uh, we're going to talk about railroad chapel cars. Um, basically, church-related cars that were put on the backs of trains and dragged all over the West, mostly, um, uh, providing church services, funeral services, weddings, uh, you name it, Sunday school uh, for for the untamed West, as they say. So that's what we're doing next week. Let me um, get back here and we'll unmute everybody in case anybody wants to ask a question or chime in. <laughs> so now I think we're back. Does anybody have any questions or comments you want to make? Okay, well, I'm going to let you go. Give me about half an hour, maybe an hour to get the web page fixed up with these um, links and so on. And uh, we will 
see you next Saturday at 10 o'clock for Railroad Chapel Party. Thank you very much for the ride. Okay, you bet. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Good way to start yeah. the weekend. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I will do my best. For you guys, too. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Bet. Take care. That's fun. Oh. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.